and we'll talk about it all there. Inside Feed Punters Club, back for another week. Uh, Frano, Trav, Mato is strung up at um, Blackbird Riverside um, <laughs> on the piss. So whether he joins or not, who fucking knows? Um, but we had to push this through on a Wednesday night because um, one of us uh, is away on holidays as of tomorrow and uh, we need to get it all published. Uh, how are you going, Frano? But I'm good. Um, and Matt. I just want to. I just want to bask in the end of that glory. We went head to head. We did. Um, I was it like looking back on it. I was. Uh, I should have had more money on it. End of that. But you've always. You always tread carefully when there's a dollar sixty favorite. You've got to be a. You've got to be really, really, really confident. You did make a very good case for it. Just I will smash be money. Yeah, I mean, my I went against you in that. You got. Um, Vowmaster is still. I don't even know if it's completed the course yet. Vowmaster. And, got no favours uh, with the ride. Nah, no but I mean, it did have the widest barrier, so we knew that at the yeah. time. So um, I actually thought he'd ping and lead um, or go yeah. near to the front and make his own luck. Didn't happen. Um, and then there was fucking, what was the other one? Oh, subpoenaed, bolted in for Marto uh, against yeah. whatever I backed. Pills at positive piece. So I officially had a fucking shocker. Like, I'm finding him harder to pick than a broken nose at the moment. So um i've i've just i've zoned in this week but i am i've got a big day at noosa surf club on saturday and i want to rob those motherfuckers of all their money so <laughs> here's hoping um good racing this week frano like every week excuse yep. me um we good. it is great um flemington and randwick the two headquarters and then we go to the big open space of the sunny coast in queensland I think you're strong in Queensland this weekend. I think you might have a cheeky one in Melbourne. So I'm just going to start in Sydney. Um, actually, no, let's start in Melbourne because I've only got one in Melbourne, so do you. So um, what have you found for us at headquarters frame train for Australian Guineas weekend uh, at Flemington? I think I think there's a one at a nice price, uh, favourite in race three. That's number five, Bam's on fire. About 10 minutes before this podcast, I was just finishing up watching its last run. Never got any uh, clear air. Was last uh, coming into the bend on Caulfield. Um, went up against Probabil. Was a cup like really rattled home into six, which doesn't you know doesn't fill you with a whole heap of confidence. But um, it was two and a half lengths off Probabil. Um, gets a better draw here, uh, Flemington. So bring it on, I reckon. Great price at three seventy. Yeah, race three, number five, frame train, bams on fire. It is dual accepted, I think, in Sydney as well, but you would think with Barrier 4 and Jamie Carr on board, they'll run in Melbourne, um, presumably. Uh, unfortunately, frame my... Uh, oh, no, not again. I, I mean, but I just fucking lose all the time. Like, um, I'm just in a rut. I'm like Mark Taylor before he got his 334. That's what I'm like. Um, so I'm either going to blast out this week or in the ensuing weeks. Like today, I tipped um, Castel something or other, Sant'Angelo. Castel Sant'Angelo, yeah. Sant'Angelo at Gosford, thinking it would lead. And it was fucking off the bit at the 2000 mark. And um, I think it got picked up by the um, ambulance. Anyways, I digress. Race three, Flemington for me, number six, Sierra Sue, uh, was my one bet in Melbourne on Saturday. Um, <laughs> and here's my case for it, Frano. Um, it will go forward, probably lead or sit outside Holbein uh, in the run. Uh, one from one at the track, two from two at the distance, two from two second up. Uh, Michael Walker barrier two, 54 kilos. Uh, not overly impressive first up at Caulfield, but I think that's just not its track. I think it just needs to settle, um, do it at its own steam, and then uh, it'll give a good kick. So hopefully we actually cross and lead and Sierra Sue wins, bams on fire, flashes for second, and I take the exacta uh, and get one back on you. Um, so unfortunately, we're both on race three, Flemington. It's another match race. Uh, frame train with bams on fire. I am with Sierra Sue. Fuck. Uh, over to Randwick, Frano. Um, racing there, Chipping Norton Stakes Day and Surround Stakes, fantastic card of racing. I've got one at good odds and then two that I think will just hopefully win. Race two, Fran, I want you to ride this with me just right now. Um, if you've got a race card, maybe on play up there in front of you, um, go to Saturday, race two at Randwick. I really like one here at 20 to one or maybe 23. Uh, race two, number four, Singer Love Song. Now this race has got Shaquero, the Magic Millions winner, uh, Captivant, 
uh, High Lal, which has been well backed. But I really think this singer love song uh, is crying out for the 1200. It finished third to Remark, which is the benchmark two-year-old. It finished third in the, um, oh, fuck, what was that race? Um, uh, home Affairs ran second in because I was on Home Affairs and it got just gobbled up in the last minute uh, by Zuthus or Zethus. Um, but uh, Singer Love Song was flying at the end and it trialled recently and trialled really well as well. John O'Shea, I like Jason Collard on it. Barry is not great, but it goes back to last anyways, or it goes back. So if it's got a bit of cover, I think the 1200 will suit. So I'm going to go race two, number four, uh, a little each way bet at 20 to one on Singer Love Song. Brano? Yeah, yeah. On the dollar side. Yeah, I don't really like the favourites in that. I really don't. So we'll see how we go. Um, I can't do any worse than I've been doing the last fucking two or three weeks. So um, Race six, Chipping Norton Stakes, uh, backing up on one of my favourites that uh, just sort of missed the start last time out uh, and Colette beat it, but I'm going again on very elegant. Um, should get a soft track. Uh, barrier four, hopefully if it doesn't just miss that start by half a length, it'll sit sort of um, maybe one out, one back or, or in that second or maybe third pair. Uh, Jay McDonald for Chris Waller. Uh, Colette has never been beaten on a wet track and I think it's going to be soft in Sydney on the weekend, but uh, I don't think uh, very elegant. Uh, I don't think Colette's ever raced very elegant um, too many times on a wet track, obviously aside from first up. And I think very elegant, second up, 1600, uh, about $2.60 or $2.70 on play up. Uh, race six, number six, very elegant. Not the best of the weekend, but uh, keen on it to avenge the loss from last week or two weeks ago. And then uh, my bet of the day frame train is in Sydney. Um, and fuck, we're due for a win. Um, race eight at Randwick. Uh, Chris Waller again for uh, with Tommy Berry. Number 10, Great House at about $2.40. Yeah, um, fantastic win first up. Um, it'll again probably go back to last. And as long as they're able to make ground at Randwick, which on a soft track, I'm sure they will. Um, I think it'll be winning with 53 kilos. So... Better the day, race eight, Randwick, number 10, Great House. Uh, Brain Train, uh, Sunshine Coast is the venue for Queensland Racing. You are the bona fide Queensland guru, as you uh, often tell us. You've, I think not, you've not, self got, not self appointed. I've only, got, I've only got the one in Queensland for the weekend, or Brisbane rather, uh, or Sunshine Coast. What have you found? I think you've got a couple. I got, yeah, I got three. First race on plan, that's race four. I'm with the favourite, um, Cochrane. It's uh, X Snowden. Um, its first up run was Eagle Farm. Just I think it was uh, just before Christmas. That meeting the week before Christmas, and it it gave a sight and got um, it was about eight dollars fifty and and then spec late, and it um it just missed behind Alpine Edge. It was a really good run, um, and then it turned in a bit of a shocker down at Randwick, came last, and now. It's back over to the Golan stable, and I think um, I think it'll be too good for some of these that have have only um, um, sort of Queensland form. I think they had a bit of an opinion on it, of it. So there's been some specking, two seventy into two thirty five. So hopefully a nice start to the proceedings in race four. Um, I didn't pick this out before the podcast, but I'm absolutely following you in there. Yeah, Alpine Edge form, pretty good form. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, um, I don't think there'll be any issues with like the track, or I think there might be a bit of rain at Sunshine Coast, but it's usually a pretty good track, so should be uh, good there. Then I'm going to the next race, race five. I'm going to go Kisakano here. Turned out a pretty ordinary showing last start um, in the. I think it was racing against the older horses, uh, and just didn't do much there at Eagle Farm. Uh, Sixty-one kilos is a big query. But it's the thousand meter shoot at Sunny Coast, and I'm and I'm hoping from Barrier Eight they just they just go handlebars down and they just can't pick her up. That's what I'm hoping. Um, the danger is mass destruction. Um, its first up run here was pretty pretty impressive. Uh, its um, debut run at the track was pretty impressive. Came from last, and it's got a lot of weight. So I think that will be the um, the likely sort of Quinella or Exacta, but I just hope that, yeah, lead at all costs go quick for Kizikano. And then um, I'll just, I'll just the last say, bet I've got in cost. Uh, oh, 
Sorry, you just broke up. Yeah. You haven't paid your internet. Oh, sorry. Like, like Marlo. Um, <laughs> I reckon in that race, a great kid's a kind of really good horse. That number 11 in Serto, a fucking good horse too. Um, for, uh, is it Gary Duncan, I think? Um, it, I think it only won it like. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been beaten. Uh, yeah, undefeated. Its last win was so arrogant. It was only 800 at Ipswich, but. It just, I don't know, it, it, it might have something to it. Agree, Kisikano is probably the, uh, well, it is definitely the class runner. Uh, and I think you're right. But I think the advantage Kisikano has on mass destruction there is that it's drawn one gate inside of it. Um, so if they both go okay. forward, Kisikano should be able to find the fence, hopefully. Um, and mass destruction might even be three wide if it can't. So, uh, so that was uh, race five, number yeah. one for the frame train. And then... Um... I think it was two or three weeks ago on this podcast, tipped uh, Sophie's Gold Class at very large odds over the same trip. Actually, it might be up. It might be it going is. 1,400. Yeah, it is. Going 1,400 to 1,600. Had a shocking barrier, went forward. Surprisingly, I thought it would go back from the barrier. But it went forward, sort of got parked three wide. Um, I thought it was a diet straight. It had all, all sort of... Um, Pausing for uh, effect here, Frana. We've lost Frana. Oh, no. Hang on, Frana. Yeah, no, you, you're just jumping in and out, Frana. That's okay. Are we Sorry, mate. Um, yeah, you were on Emerald Kingdom. Animal Kingdom led yeah. one. Just to let you know, I think it's my internet that's fucked, not yours. All right, that's not good. good yeah, no. Uh, Have you got me? Yeah, no, I've got you. I just think my internet's fucked. I don't know. I'll pay the bill tomorrow. Um, anyway, yeah. Emerald Kingdom beat Sophie's Gold Class. Sophie's Gold Class was three deep the whole fucking trip, unfortunately. Yep. Um, so that's me. That's my son. Cool. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going against you in that race. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going with um, race uh, eight at the sunny coast. I think it's actually a really good Quinella. Uh, I think down the bottom of the weights, Wapiti will win... Uh, with 54 on its back and uh, Robbie Frad. Um, its last run, it was three and a half lengths off parody uh, at the Gold Coast, um, which is pretty, pretty fucking good form. In fact, it's been third to parody its last two starts. So I'm going uh, Wapiti, race uh, eight, number 13 at the Sunny Coast um, as my, uh, my sort of my one bet there, actually. I, I will back you in on. Um, uh, Cochrane, uh, the one in race four as well. I think that's a really uh, savvy investment. I'll probably lay Kisikano, but um, I'll back you in on Cochrane. Uh, Frano, uh, two weeks ago, you also tipped this one in Adelaide, which I didn't talk to you about before this. Um, sorry, you tipped it at Caulfield. It's running in Adelaide on Saturday. And if I can just find the race, it's at Murray Bridge, uh, Scorched Earth. Race six, number four, Scorched oh. Earth. Which which ran second to Arcaded. Um, it's come up 225. There's a Hayes first start, a Lady of Honour, which has been well backed, but uh, it's drawn terribly. So I think race six, number four, Scorched Earth will lead and win. It is a very long straight at Murray Bridge, but yeah. hopefully it's just got a clean, clean set of heels. Um, yeah, Barry four is good. Um, yeah, lovely. Lovely. So I'm, I'm following you in on Scorched Earth. So we're head to head again this weekend. Sophie's Gold Class versus Wapiti. And Bam's on fire versus Sierra Sue. So, you're based on last week's form, you'll be a fucking millionaire, and I'll be eating bread and butter. Um, Fran, that's pretty much the racing wrap for this week. Um, other than that, bit of Super Rugby on this weekend. The Reds play the Rebels, and the uh, Brumbies play the Waratahs. I think if you take a multi of those two teams, you get about a dollar thirty for the Reds all up the Brumbies. Um, so there's no value there. Um, but I am going to go with um, both the Reds and the Brumbies to cover their respective lines uh, on Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday, respectively. I think the Reds are covering about 12 uh, and the Brumbies about 16. Uh, I reckon the Reds and Brumbies will both win by more than that. So I think you get about $3.50 if you multi that up. So um, that's one for the Super Rugby uh, Reds Friday night versus the Rebels and then the Brumbies down in Canberra versus the Waratahs on Saturday evening. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we can bet on this weekend, Frona. The NRL is about uh, two weeks away. No, 
no, nah, nothing, nothing that I've got. Um, I think there's some cricket over in uh, New Zealand. There is but, um, but yeah, I'm probably steer clear of that. The Aussies might might get another touch up. Yeah, they did on the, on uh, on Monday. No, the 2020 is on tomorrow. I might have a look at that actually. Um, but apart from that, um, I don't know what the racing is next week. I'm sure it'll be fucking shit hot. It is that time of the year. It's uh, it's rim with Guinea's Day. Oh, you sound like you've got a tip. Oh. oh. Oh no! I'll be I'll be down at Ramwick. I'm going oh, down. Wrong. Fuck, down yeah, on, good. on site. Um, that is. Oh, you do that every year, don't you? Yeah, I go every year. I'll be trackside. I can I can provide some comments live. <laughs> ready, mounting ready to go. You'll be Lizzie Jelfs in the mounting yard. <laughs> Um, right, well, uh, short podcast tonight because some of us have um, a lot of on our agenda, which is both you and I. So um, we will rush this through, we'll publish it, and uh, good luck on the punt.